Hello everyone, today is Friday, August 7th, 2020. My name is Evan and welcome back to another market recap video. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We break these videos up into two parts. The first part, we talk about everything that went on in the market this week. So we look at the performance, we look at uh, individual sectors, volatility and uh, market internals, and we really just pick apart everything that happened, everything that stands out. And then in part two of this video, we dive into the charts, we look at some longer term trends, and we put everything from part one into perspective and try and draw some outlooks and uh, next steps for the market. So hopefully that sounds good. Let's jump into today's video, this week's video. Uh, a couple of the headlines, a couple of the standout uh, mentions is that we had stocks broadly this week resolving ranges to the upside. If you recall, and if you listen to our uh, weekly recap video last week, uh, we talked a, a lot about how the performance was good for stocks, but we didn't actually get any meaningful uh, structural sort of breakouts or uh, momentum moves to the upside. And I think we saw a lot of that actually happen, take place, and really uh, get set into motion throughout the course of this week. The Dow Jones uh, is up six days in a row right now, so kind of bucking the trend and, and picking up some of its outperformance recently. And a little bit of NASDAQ jitters here on Friday. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in the short term. Uh, Friday's action left a little to be desired going into the weekend, specifically for the NASDAQ, and uh, we'll talk more about that in part two. So if we look here at performance for this week, uh, if we're looking at the right-hand column here, you can basically see a strongly positive week uh, across the board. S&P, NASDAQ, both up over 2%. Russell 2000 up almost 6%. And world stocks are Acquiex proxy here. So international stocks minus the US, X the US, uh, up 2% as well. If we scroll through to market internals, you can see again, very uh, constructive week here as well. Uh, we saw over 500 uh, new 52 week highs this week on aggregate over the five days. That's constructive. Uh, the NYSE uh, AD line net on the week here up 3,500 and percentage of stocks above a 20 SMA, uh, about three quarters of the S&P 500 are above their 20 period simple moving average. So we basically have uh, a broad based uh, rally this week. We have uh, market internals, which are supportive, and we have the number of uh, uptrends, basically, number of stocks participating in this uptrend uh, at a pretty, you know, pretty solid, uh, healthy number. If we take a look at sector performance here, we had a bit of a changing of the guard. So again, these aren't the usual suspects, the usual leaders here throughout the year. Uh, we had a little bit of a switch with industrials, financials, and energy uh, being the top three performers. And on the downside, we had uh, real estate, we had healthcare and utilities at the bottom of the list. Notice uh, this week though, everything was still positive. So we didn't have any uh, negative uh, even on the downside here. So again, uh, speaks to sort of the, uh, the slightly more broad breadth uh, that we saw in this week's rally. If we take a look at volatility here, also constructive. Basically, we're looking at this blue line, which is this week's volatility curve for the S&P 500. So that's important to note. Um, and uh, the orange line is last week's vol structure. And basically, you can see uh, everything went down. And, th and that, is a, that is a good thing uh, if you're bullish. That is a good thing that you see volatility uh, kind of uh, continue to unwind out of this market, uh, trading at around 22, which is still historically quite elevated, uh, but a much better than upper 20s or lower 30s like we were for a long time. Uh, credit markets uh, are two proxies here, LQD and JNK ETFs uh, for investment grade and high yield, uh, both very much uh, kind of resilient this week as well, both positive, no real warning signs, no major divergences, uh, anything that we're seeing here in terms of credit. And if we look just broadly at some commodities, interest rates, we did see interest rates tick up this, this week. Uh, so across the curve, basically, we got interest rates rising a little bit, which means bond prices coming down which is something that doesn't happen too often in this environment, but uh, got bond prices pulling back just a little bit. Gold still higher, silver much higher. Um, so really continuing its, uh, you know, uh, 
historic really is the word uh, run and push to the upside here in silver and oil also continuing higher so all in all we put this together we've got a constructive report card this week we have an a minus for the performance the environment this week uh everything uh for the most part here lining up in the bulls in the bulls uh favor in the bulls camp again that doesn't mean we can't see some type of short-term uh pullback we'll talk about that in part two in just a moment uh doesn't mean we can't see a little bit of digestion here and to see a down week to follow this but it just means that overall uh this is pretty constructive behavior that we're seeing and if we round it out here with um you know sort of our uh, the skin in the game that we have or our our allocation here as i think traders like to see this is our merlin trading strategy trading strategy investment strategy um and you can see it basically uh increased its exposure throughout the course of this week in fact one of the lowest cash positions that it's had on in some time uh more stocks getting picked up here in the tech side of thing uh which finally starting to get some pullbacks and some cracks there in some of those high momentum tech growth leaders um and uh with some of those uh pullbacks with some of those retracements uh we're starting to get some more signals here so if you're interested in learning more there's a link down there uh you can head to um the link that's probably appearing in the top right hand corner uh, free trials available for this particular strategy so that's it for part one we'll be back in just a moment here with some charts all right we're back here we've got uh, warden tc2000 open we've got our equity market grid showing right now the white dashed lines on each of these charts is price itself the uh, colored green yellow red is our custom smart trend filter indicator and we're looking at a weekly time frame so if we look here at the top left s p 500 no change to speak of price was higher this week we continue to extend to the upside here we've had a bullish outlook for the s p 500 for the past two point uh, eh, basically two and a half months so uh really no change to speak of here uh same thing with the nasdaq in the top right you can see basically price continues to extend higher we've had a uh, bullish outlook here for a little over two and a half months as well no changes to speak of bottom left russell 2000 up uh the largest this week up six percent and uh, notice the uh, distance the separation the angling here on these last two bars of our smart trend filter so you can see getting a little more urgency there kind of increasing the intermediate term signal strength here for iwm it's constructive we've been constructive same thing with the bottom right aquiex same weekly bullish outlook and that is persisting if we go down to a daily time frame and take a look at of all these markets really didn't have any change this week as well um so basically you know we're just looking at a, a closer time frame we're chopping up the markets getting that magnifying glass a little bit closer here on the daily chart basically you can see four uptrends green dots getting printed in all of these markets just the same like we uh just looked at uh the only you know slight differences is you, you saw uh last week and even early this week in the russell 2000 we had a little bit of uncertainty getting printed here with these yellow dots uh but notice that ended up resolving itself to the upside prices all continuing higher here and uh basically out of all of these markets it does look like international acquiex on the on the bottom right here is probably most in in uh potential jeopardy of, of, of essentially retesting and maybe turning back down to a yellow uh but still it's a bullish outlook right across the board so let's look at some of the price action specifically now uh, looking at some candlestick charts of our major averages so the s p 500 again the theme i think from this week and, and you know we started talking about it in our tuesday midweek uh, analysis video was that we were getting uh resolution to the upside in lots of these ranges and and that's exactly what we saw this week you basically see the s p 500 um you know closing higher it looks like the s p 500 closing higher six days in a row as well uh, i pulled that stat for the dow jones but uh, it is the s p 500 as well so if we look here at the spy you can see uh it breaking over uh the uh prior high here around 3276 uh it continued to rally throughout the week this 3222 level if we zoom back out was um the gap fill 
back here from or approximate gap fill from Friday, uh, February 20. Well, I guess it would be the Monday, February 24th. Uh, this open gap here, which was sort of a target that we were looking at, I think probably lots of traders were looking at, uh, ended up getting filled this week. And uh, as it stands, uh, we're continuing to hold this level and continuing to stay sort of pent up here. So uh, the bulls uh, getting that gap fill uh, kind of retested here. Things are holding up. And really, when we think about overhead resistance, there's there's only one, you know, sort of uh, big level uh, to, to pay attention to now. And it's the prior all time highs and the prior all time highs in the S&P 500 are less than two percent away at this point. So um, that's that's really the next big level uh, to pay attention to. And we are quite close to it. So uh, it seems reasonable that we could get back up there and test that uh, maybe even as early as next week. But keep in mind, with an S&P 500 up six days in a row, uh, we've covered a good amount of ground in a short amount of time. So some type of pause, some type of reaction, some type of retest or sideways movement is probably in the cards. And it shouldn't really be thought of as unreasonable to see a little bit of a shakeout here uh, in the next several days as well. Uh, just know that you know the longer term trends, the longer term structure is still supportive of upper uh, of higher prices. So I think that's uh, you know that's the roadmap. That's that's really what matters here, and that's sort of why we you know simplify the opening of these videos is because these these filters here, the smart trend filters, and you don't have to use these. You could use any any type of trend heuristic, but uh, basically, you know, the dominant direction and which, you know, wh which way uh, sort of the, the wind is blowing. And that's kind of where you want to align yourself. Uh, again, doesn't mean there can't be some short term turbulence, but at least you have uh, sort of that guide guidepost at your back. So for the S&P 500, pay attention to those all time highs. Again, that's coming in around uh, this level right in here. And on the downside, uh, you know, basically there's there's room to pull all the way back down. I mean, you know, there's a if, if you're a fan and you want to look at this uh, more accelerated slope here, then you can see this is basically the market's been uh, rallying in a pretty steep slope. Uh, so, you know, you might expect that to get jeopardized. But really, um, 32. 30 uh you know these this this area where we carved out some some support uh sideways movement that's the key level to pay attention to to hold um if we start to lose that then um you know then perhaps we're in store for a bigger pullback or more of a, a environment change uh, but until and if that happens uh we can pay attention to that trend there and try and align ourselves with it if we look at the russell 2000 here uh via the iwm you can see this broke out to the upside remember we talked talked about uh, last week, we even just said 153 would be a reasonable target for this to get to, to maybe, you know, uh, retest and, and then kind of figure out what needs to happen around here. Maybe some sellers show back up. Uh, we basically got right back up into 153 and then we uh, accelerated higher on Friday. Uh, so we actually saw probably the most bullish uh, scenario here kind of unfold in the Russell 2000. Uh, once again, it has covered a good amount of ground in a short order. So I don't know that buying today is, is you know, going to be your best entry. Uh, we could see some type of shakeout or pullback or uh, reset here in the short term, uh, but longer term and or, or intermediate term, I should say, we've break it, breaking uh, resistance in, to the upside. Uh, our trends are, are aligned to the upside here. So life looks pretty good for the bull case. Finally, if we look at the NASDAQ 100, uh, we can see here that uh, this also started to resolve this range to the upside. So we're basically looking at um, the NASDAQ in this area. Uh, we broke out, uh, I guess, marginally on Wednesday, closing at those new highs, and then really saw more of a convincing move on Thursday. And then Friday, we got left with a little bit of uh, some uncertainty, a little bit of a, a small sort of rug pull. And uh, I think a lot of people are looking at this, maybe giving uh, traders a little anxiety into the weekend. Maybe it's meaningful. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the start to something meaningful. Uh, as of right now, uh, we are still holding above this range. 
and uh, we closed 2% higher, just off of all-time highs. So, uh, and trends are still to the upside here. So, you know, it's kind of that, um, you know, glass half full outlook I think you'd have to give this market until you see some more follow through, until you see some more convincing selling. Um, I think, uh, you know, you still need to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Again, if we come in Monday and we see an aggressive, you know, high volume move back down, rejecting back into this range, then that certainly starts to change the picture, uh, at least in the short term, uh, for the NASDAQ 100. So let's keep a close eye on it. Um, but, you know, these types of single type of days here where, you um, we see a little increased volatility. We see some large ranges. Uh, this has been a pattern here for the past three and a half, four months as this market has rallied. We get these single day, sometimes two days in a row of, um, you know, some selling and, um, ultimately you know it doesn't lead to a whole lot and the market continues to grind higher it will of course change at some point we will get that 5 10 15 20 percent pullback in the queues uh maybe it's today maybe that's the start um but so far it hasn't happened um, as of right now. So I think let's take it a day by day at a time. Let's see if we get any follow through selling next week and uh, pay attention to this level here below 251. I think that's where things get more concerning and dicey. If we were to fall back into this range and then we were to take out the lower end of this range and put in more of a topping consolidation pattern here, that I think would be a more convincing intermediate term signal uh, that things are changing uh, and we're pretty good ways away from that at this time. So that's sort of the, the roadmap here. I think, uh, again, the most interesting part is just uh, the, the, I think the Russell Q's divergence here on Friday was quite interesting as the Russell really accelerated to the upside and the NASDAQ 100 ended up closing down over 1%. That's a pretty stark comparison. And uh, even, you know, again, the SPY, the Dow closing six days up in a row. I think that's kind of interesting. Maybe a little rotation going on out of the uh, beloved tech sector that has been doing so well. So that, I think, covers the major markets. Let's move into some uh, other, other markets out there. We've got credit in the top left, top right. Uh, no changes there. Still bullish trends on uh, investment grade, high yield credit. Uh, on the bottom left is the VIX. We still have a sell signal here. So our outlook for VIX uh, basically went bearish on uh, the first week of July, let's call it, and uh, continues to remain bearish. And uh, on TLT, we're still in uh, a long environment here, a bullish outlook for TLT. It did close down this week. So TLT did close down 65 bips, but um, still outlook here on a longer term basis is still pretty bullish. If we went on to a daily chart on all of these, VIX is still in a sell signal, TLT still in a buy signal. Uh, commodities, if we look here in the top left, is gold continues to uh, really just rip to the upside 2.9%. Uh, and of course, this is after um, lots of movement, lots of constructive positive forward movement for GLD. So GLD still doing uh, great. Silver, look at the expansion here in our trend filters. That separation, that strength there just continues to show how much is, is of, of capital and inflow into silver right now. SLV up 15% on the week. Uh, once again, breaking records, I think, in the speed at which uh, we're seeing the flood into silver right now. Uh, very extended in the short term, but you know, obviously longer term has uh, had quite the regime change over these past couple of months. Oil, commodities, not a whole lot of change there. I mean, oil, I guess, well, we did get one change, which we started to talk about on Tuesday's video, is that we finally got uh, a neutral printing trend uh, outlook here for USO. First time since uh, early 2020. So uh, we're finally back to uh, kind of trend here. It'd be interesting to see if USO uh, can start to shape back up in the coming weeks. If we go to our sector grids, um, there's a couple of standouts here that I uh, wanted to mention, uh, which we're going to look at more uh, when we look at price action. This is the weekly view. I mean, not a whole lot to, to you know change here. And, and again, I, I think what's worth pointing out is just the, um, the bullish outlook here on most sectors. I think actually every single sector is printing a buy signal except for energy uh, is the only one and it's basically just neutral right now uh, but every other sector of the market has a buy signal for our trend filters on the weekly time frame on the daily chart it's a little bit different um, still mostly positive but a little more uncertainty you can see biotech in red right now um, and uh, utilities in, in yellow 
right now, uh, energy in yellow right now. But for the most part, it's a pretty constructive uh, you know, outlook out there in terms of sectors. So let's take a look at a um, couple I want to just point out. Let's start with energy just because we mentioned it a few times. Uh, so energy here, you know, we, we talk about uh, the fact that it's still, you know, kind of in a yellow neutral choppy outlook. And uh, when we look at the price action, it, it basically, you know, reveals itself as to why that's the case. It's gone essentially nowhere. It just keeps oscillating sideways here. And, um, you know, it's taken its time. It's had a pretty good base at this point, a little over a month, uh, almost a month and a half at this point. So do you think energy is getting ripe? for a move uh, and I don't really think you need to look a whole lot further than um, the uh, the top end of this range here so coming in around 3830 uh, I think that's going to be an important level and uh, you know on the downside it's a little more wiggle room but you kind of have this shelf of uh, support down here around 34s the lower 34s and then up here so uh, looking for some type of resolve there I think makes sense uh, XLV you know this is another one that's been consolidating we've talked about it this is kind of uh, you know the healthcare basket which um, has been a little more or I guess biotech specifically has been a little more under pressure which is a slight, slightly thinner slice of, of healthcare I guess uh, but XLV you can see here you know, had a huge, uh, had, had quite the con consolidation here from uh, call it April throughout July. So it was basically three months worth of sideways trading. It popped to the top end of that range and now it's still going sideways again. So I think it's a pretty high stakes area to pay attention to. It does seem ripe for some vol expansion, some directional movement. I think XLV is something we want to pay attention to. Uh, obviously the, the, the bull case here is that it resolves to the upside and we have all this nice supply at our back uh, to hopefully take us higher. Um, we'll see if that's the case. If it starts rejecting down below 104, then that's going to spell some trouble. So uh, we'll see how that shakes out, but it's something worth paying attention to. Uh, the Dow Jones, I wanted to actually, you know, we don't typically uh, spend a whole lot of time on the Dow. Um, but, you know, if we look here just at uh, the, you know, the levitation higher this week, really, uh, it was in the penalty box a little bit as an underperforming average uh, the last week or two. But now it has uh, kind of reclaimed itself. It took out its old highs over here and it's just kind of coming back into its June highs and does seem to be getting some rotation. So keep an eye on it. It does look like it wants to... Um, you know, uh, act as some type of rotational leader. Of course, obviously, you know, six days up. So let's, um, you know, let, let you know, Monday's trading might not be the entry if, if you're not already involved in it. So just, you know, sort of keep that in mind. The last, um, last individual stock actually I wanted to mention was Facebook. Um, only because of the, of the volume that kind of poured in here and uh, the fact that it did sort of buck the trend in uh, technology on Friday, uh, if you want to call it technology, I know it's more consumer services, but um, this this stock, you know, went sideways here for basically two and a half months, and uh, it is starting now to resolve to the upside. And you can see the heavy volume that's coming in here. Had a big day on Thursday, continued higher on Friday. This is all time highs for Facebook, um, so uh, something to keep an eye on. We did do um, a trade ideas video this Wednesday. We actually changed up the format of our trade ideas videos, um, so do check that out. Saw some good comments come in on it, and I'm going to continue to iterate on. On those videos those come out every Wednesday um, I actually think Facebook I can't remember now Facebook was in it um, but still um, a lot you know lots more individual stock ideas if that's what you're interested in uh, on those Wednesday videos so that is it that is the uh, the weekly recap for uh, August 7th that is what happened and hopefully you guys are navigating this market uh, great out there. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us at The Trade Risk. Have a great weekend and we'll see you back here next week.